welcome to my session. Happy to see you here. It's my first Drupal talk after a long COVID pause, and I'm really happy to be here with you today. So before we start with my topic, let me introduce myself. My name is Maria Totuba. I'm a Drupal developer. I work at Trio Group, German agency. I'm also head of the office project because I'm from Bulgaria. And um, I'm head of our brand new IT Talents Academy. And I'll tell you a bit more about it during the session. But I'm also Coding Girls Plovdiv Community Leader. This is a non-government organization, uh, as well as Women Tech Network. And I'm board member of our local Bulgarian Drupal Association. I'm also co-founder of Drupal Girls, the project. And uh, I'm happy to work with students in our Plovdiv University, where I teach Drupal to them. I'm also um, speaker, mentor, trainer, and event organizer. So looking for Drupal developers can be really tricky, right? Most of you should know about it. And this is something that we found as well. So we decided we should go into another direction. Because every day we see an increasing number of um, increasing hunger for people, for new developers, especially Drupal developers are really high, hard to find or even harder to keep. So um, in terms of long, looking for long-term solutions, we decided that it's better to grow our own developers. And uh, as I'm part, as I'm a professor assistant in the university, I have this direct reach to university students who are really great young talents, and I can choose from them the top of the top. So this is um, the direction that we started, and now I also talk more about our experience and um, our results. But before uh, starting with the training itself, let's uh, talk a little more, more about mentoring. So what does mentoring mean? It is typically defined, and I will cite, as a professional relationship in which an experienced specialist provides assistance to another person in developing better skills and knowledge. Right? But it's not only about that. Mentoring includes training, of course, but it's also um, something more special. It's about motivation, about giving an advice at the right moment, um, encouraging you when you feel blue or lost. Um, that's where the mentor comes into play. And his or her role is to motivate you to keep fighting or to guide you uh, when you have a problem. Uh, or sometimes simply by knowing that there is someone out there that you can reach out to is all the support you may need. Speaking about the mentor-mentee relationship, this is actually a really special bond because it's a two-way direction. It's not only one way. Because um, not only the mentee is the one who learns or looking for help, but also the mentor should be there, should understand the mentee. And you know, by um, t teaching, it's the best way to learn, actually. Even mentors have mentor. So um, this is something that you should understand and embrace. It's not something that you should be worried about or you can learn from everybody. And why should we invest into mentoring? There are a lot of benefits on the all parties that are involved. First, on the mentees, of course, this is a great opportunity to learn better and more, um, more of everything to learn faster. Because uh, when there is a guided or mentored um, training, this speeds everything up a lot. Also, this opens new perspectives when solving problems. You can see another point of view and you receive the motivation to try harder, to do your best, to achieve more. And there's always support and advice. But on the mentor side, we also have these benefits uh, because uh, each time you have to explain something to your mentee, you have to understand it very well. You have to use simple words or um, 
approach that is uh, really easy to understand by your trainees. So this makes you a better trainer, better developer, better coach, if you'd like. And of course, that's a great way to give back to the community and contribute as well. About the business, and the benefits are also very big because this way you can attract talent and keep your employees. Because you should know that all employees or trainees, um, they cherish a lot when your company invests into their uh, growing, in growing, into their career development. On the other hand, this um, training of young talents brings a lot of positive business reputation and, of course, better brand recognition. That all comes to say that the importance of mentorship is absolutely unquestionable. But how to be a good mentor or how do you know that you're a good mentor? Um, the very first thing that you need to do is to actually step out of your comfort zone and try be a mentor. Uh, it's a big problem because uh, a lot of people, uh, mostly women, they have never had mentors in their life. And there are great specialists who are just wondering, am I good enough to mentor? You are. And even if you change only one person's, help only one person, um, you have changed her or his life, so it's really worth it. Yes, the imposter syndrome is a big problem because um, people think that they don't know everything, they're not good enough to teach, but you are. And it, there's a lot that you can teach to your mentees. Uh, but you have to be open that you don't have, um, you're not expected to know everything. And your mentees, your trainees should know that. They should understand that uh, they are, um, your job is to make them learn, to make them debug, to research, to find solutions, not to bring everything ready for them or to teach all the materials out there. No. Um, and this is very important. Uh, yeah. It's very important to break the stereotype. And what does it mean? You have to have a personal approach, individual approach to your trainees. You have to respect their interests, whether they are back-end oriented, if they are front-end oriented, or both. Uh, of course, respect diversity, cultural, religious uh, aspects, everything. Just create a safe environment for your trainees uh, so that they can grow, they can feel better and grow faster. You should show your good side, of course, to be open, honest, helpful, to encourage them, uh, to be patient. But sometimes you also have to show your bad side. Uh, because, as I said already, you don't have to bring everything ready or um, prepared for your mentees. They have to be able to work independently, to learn how to research, how to uh, work, how to develop. So um, sometimes you need to provide constructive critics, of course, but this is part of the training. Uh, one thing that you should know when you decide to become a mentor is that it takes time. You have to prepare. You can't just start without curriculum, without plans. You have to be prepared, and this needs time. You have to, uh, even if you give some materials, some tutorials, some video, uh, video tutorials as well, you have to watch them. You have to know uh, what your trainees will see there. So it's time consuming, but uh, it's really great because um, very often you can learn a lot from your mentees as well because they have found something that maybe you don't know. And it's really, uh, as I have show, uh, shown, it's constantly improving yourself. And how to provide a good training. Now we shall see some techniques that we have used um, about the training. But first, the training, um, it refers to the actual process of teaching, of developing skills. Uh, it can take many forms like classroom instructions, internship programs, extra activities like workshops, short courses, etc. cetera. Uh, but the purpose of training is to help individuals acquire the knowledge and skills they need to do their job effectively. 
Um, one very important thing about trainings is that they're always very well organized. You must have a curriculum. And even better if you prepare your own lesson plans, like for each class. Um, so after that, you know, to be more specific, I'll show you some actual examples from the training activities that we have organized so that you understand better what I mean and how we do it. First, very important thing is to find partners. Don't expect to do everything on your own. That's how our company uh, even joined forces with another group of agency, Uberbit, because uh, instead of being rivals, we decided we can join forces and work together, share our resources, um, let's say mentors, instructors, as well as financial parts. But um, this is the way we can train more um, trainees, more developers, and grow our own uh, specialists. So, um, of course, Drupal Bulgaria is, uh, your, or your local association should also be involved here. Uh, we enjoy working with uh, non-government organizations like Coding Girls, Women Tech Network, because we reach out to more people, uh, both um, young people who want to train or even um, trainers, instructors. Of course, Working with the university is the best possible thing you can do because you can meet all these young talents, you can find, you can filter them, you can take um, the best or the most motivated so you know what to expect from your trainees even before you start. And uh, when we started with our trainings, we decided to went into two directions. One is a one-year Drupal internship program and the other are um, um, one time or two time extra activities. So the internship program is, as I said, one year long. It provides contracts for the trainees. Um, it's with a salary, of course, um, but actually we are paying uh, our trainees to uh, study, to learn. And um, they are very um, motivated about this. They want to impress us so they try really hard because after this internship uh, program, they have the opportunity to stay and work for our company and for Uberbit, of course. Uh, as for the extra activities, these are always free workshops, short courses, uh, meetups, even conferences. We have Drupal boot camps organizing uh, every year before the COVID, and now we already started. And these are, um, Activities that happen once per week, or if it's a short course, uh, two times per week for, let's say, three months or something. Um, this can be Drupal related, but they can be more general, like PHP, uh, JavaScript, HTML, and CSS. Um, we have make these courses for beginners, then we make um, advanced courses so that people can grow with us. And of course, we work not only with our internal instructors, but with colleagues, with volunteers from other companies. So it's always about partnership. And yeah, I have mentioned several times already the curriculum because it is really good to have um, what to expect in the beginning. And it should be very well organized program that you should follow, but it's not that strict. So. You can um, modify it in, um, in the process because it all depends on the results that your you know, trainees show. For example, if they understand some of the parts of the materials very well, you can extend them, you can make them more advanced. But we always start from the simple things and we uh, make them um, more advanced. Uh, it's a gradual um, process. So, um, yeah, you have to organize well your time. You should also uh, have um, some things um, about self-learning, which I will show you a little bit later. But first, I would like to tell you more about our Drupal internship program. So we start with onboarding, which includes, or we call it like that, onboarding, but it's actually setting up your local environment. So our trainees learn how to use Git, Composer, Docker, 
uh, Doxo because I really love this um, uh, Docker solution, so we use it on a daily basis. After that uh, beginning, or the first module, we continue with Drupal site building. And um, also these are more basic um, lessons, like uh, the things we do for each project, Drupal project um, that we start, like installing modules, working with country uh, modules and themes, uh, configurations, Drupal entities, uh, paragraphs, why not, media types, things like that. Of course, views working with the database, all the basic stuff. And we make, we extend it further, of course, after that. Now, uh, at the moment, with my trainees, we are covering the Drupal module development. We are writing custom modules because it's really important to make everything practical. You don't need to um, teach theory to these students. They have enough theory at the university. They want to do something practical. And that's why my students like a lot Drupal when I teach it in the university. Uh, because we start building a website together. Uh, in the end of their training, they have this uh, already working, even smaller, but still working website. They can learn more about not only Drupal specifics, but also about uh, website development, general principles. So always um, use a real project build something together, show in practice. While you work together, you find problems, you debug, you fix them. That's the real way that you want to uh, grow your developers. And after that, we will cover the Drupal theming, which will start with the basic stuff like how to extend the theme, how to use the Twig system, mm, preprocessing functions, and so on. After that, there comes time for the more advanced topics. And according, don't forget uh, that, it's important, according to your trainees' uh, preferences, they can go into front-end or back-end direction, or they can cover them both. Uh, so you can um, continue not only with Drupal, but also with JavaScript, Vue.js, and React. These are the technologies that we use mostly on the front-end. And of course, PHP, Symfony, why not, Laravel as well. Uh, about time management, on one side, you have to provide a mentor training. This is what um, includes the curriculum and uh, you as a mentor, as a trainer, as a teacher. You have to plan uh, well time for this, to teach, to work together. But also you have to set time slots for self-learning and exercises. This could be also guided because you should provide some resources, uh, make up some tasks uh, for them to develop and so on. Uh, on the other hand, uh, you can also let them know that they, they can reach out to you anytime. They can ask you for further individual advice or counsel. Um, and also you should let them um, search, do research on their own, find tutorials, some courses, something that they have found, something interesting, and they want to uh, learn, and they can share it later with you. It's really, really exciting. And of course, uh, something that's very important for me is to encourage your trainees to work as a team so they know that they can rely on each other. If there's a problem, they can debug it together, they can fix it together. This is what my trainees do every day. And uh, it's really great because I'm not just building a team, I'm building team players. So when they uh, go to working for our true project or for our partner Uberbit, for example, they will always be team players and they will work well in a team. Uh, yes, I already mentioned several times how important it is to uh, respect the preferences of your mentees, uh, whether backend, frontend, full stack. Uh, you don't have to force anything. They have to choose what they like because this is something I always tell my students. Um, it doesn't matter whether it's backend or frontend, just choose what makes you happy, uh, what makes you more excited to work because work should be fun. And the partnership is really, really crucial because you have to cooperate with other um, companies and NGOs to organize events together. Uh, to, teach, to, to teach together, uh, always um, invite also external experts from other companies, 
um, so that you can provide additional trainings like these extractive disks that I showed you. And yes, we are always open to new collaborations. Uh, I have just a few pictures that I wanted to share with you so that you can see what we do uh, every day together. These are my six trainees. Um, they, they, they wanted to be in the same room. So you see here, they are really um, feeling as a team. And we have some extra activities, not just, we don't just work, we also have fun together. And these are some examples of our free academy activities, like short courses, uh, workshops, meetups. This is the Drupal camp that I mentioned that we also do in the university. Uh, it's for total newbies so that they um, learn or they hear for the first time about Drupal. And in the end, I would like to finish with a famous saying that we all know. When you give a person a fish and you feed them for a day, teach a person to fish and you feed them for a lifetime. But now I would like to go a little further and expand it a little by saying that mentor a person to become a fishing expert and you empower them to teach others how to fish as well. Thank you for your attention. I'll be happy to hear any questions, or even if they are not now, you can always find me outside and we can discuss. Thank you very much for your talk. Uh, I have a, a really important question because at the company I work at, uh, we're trying to implement a mentorship program. Um, the only thing is that we find it hard to find time to do it properly. So. I would just like to have your take on maybe uh, just about how much time do you think we should spend uh, working on a mentorship program compared to working for client projects, for example? Well, yeah, I have been um, doing these uh, workshops, exercises, um, short courses and um, meetups uh, for the last six years. But in the beginning, I wasn't fully dedicated to this. Uh, I'm a backend developer, Drupal developer. I, I love writing code, of course. And um, it was like, let's say, between 30 to 40% of your time. But it also involves a lot of volunteer work. So it's not only about using your business um, hours, but you have to do it at home as well. But now, uh, starting from this year, things have changed. And I was really excited about this because my company decided that they will give me like 90% of the time of my time to teach uh, these um, trainees, our trainees. And we will see how it works for this first year. So we are now working together for um, three months, almost three months. And um, even um, the progress is uh, much better than what, than what I expected. So I'm really hoping that we'll continue this next year as well. Thank you. Other questions? Sorry for the long walk. <laughs> Hi, maybe I missed at the beginning. Um, are these full-time trainees? Is all they do is train, or are they? Do they have any billable time, or are they just training 100% of the time? So yeah, I understand your question. Just let me uh, go back to them. So um, the idea of the um, training of the, our internship program is uh, that it will take uh, um, like one year. It will be long. Uh, will take one year of time long, but uh, after the six months the six months, we decided to let them work on real projects. Like 30% uh, of their time, they will do some, in the beginning, simple tasks like um, installing some module configuring, uh, some entities, uh, content types, paragraphs, types, etc. cetera. Uh, then writing some modules even, but it will make it gradually. Uh, so um, the idea is the moment they start working uh, fully independently, even if that happens before the first year, they can become our regular employees. Yeah, and um, now 
mm, we are finishing the building module part when we cover the front end theming, the introduction, we will also start building our website of the academy. And I really wanted them to be involved in this project because it's more personal for them and they are really, um, and, uh, they have a lot of enthusiasm about it. And then just one follow up. And then their starting point was university. Like, so they have experience in some oh. HTML, CSS. Like, what, yeah, what, what's so, their general starting point? Yeah, uh, they are mm, from second year of study till newly graduated students. Um, I didn't have much um, requirements for them, ex except for some HTML, CSS knowledge. Uh, not all of them know PHP, for example. They are now studying it, but they like it. Uh, all of these uh, trainees that we have now, uh, they have been my students in my elective discipline in the university, where we built together a website, Drupal website. And uh, they really fell in love with Drupal. It's something that happens to all of my students. They all enjoy Drupal a lot, but the problem is that uh, after they finish this discipline in the university, they have nowhere to go and continue working with Drupal. Um, because most companies, even Drupal companies in Bulgaria, they are not willing to take juniors. So they are not even juniors, they are like trainees. And they're very young, but they're, um, the thing is that they are studying very fast, they're very motivated, and they show better results, better than even, uh, let's say, a mid-developer, PHP developer who is starting with Drupal. And uh, that's why we decided to try this out and see how it's working. And I'm really excited because uh, this is something I have fought for years. Um, I really want to try and find jobs for them. So it's a really good opportunity and I'm very happy about it. Hello, uh, thanks for your presentation. It's really inspiring. Um, I, so far I see uh, all the mentorship is done on site, so in personal. How do you, how do you see uh, remote mentorship yeah. nowadays? So after the COVID, you know, things have changed. Most developers, they prefer working from home. Uh, I personally enjoy being in the office and uh, having more and more people there. Uh, that's why in the beginning we decided that we'll have them in our office and I work with them every day together. They enjoy it. But I also tried homework, um, yeah, home office, working from home, because I wanted to see how much I can rely on them so that they are serious, they do their uh, trainings, uh, their tasks, uh, even if I'm not there in person. So it's uh, going on very well. Um, now, especially in the summer, some of them can go to their hometowns because they are not all from Plovdiv. They are students in Plovdiv University, but they are from other uh, cities. So they really enjoy this. Um, our company is flexible. We don't force them to stay in the office, neither any of our employees. But we always have this uh, amazing office in Plovdiv, uh, in the city center, where we can uh, get together, work together, have fun together. But uh, I don't see any difference in uh, working from home or remotely or working together in the same room. So. Even though it is 100% remote from the beginning? Yeah, yeah. yeah. actually this is uh, what uh, we will do with uh, our colleagues from Uberbit because they're in Mannheim. So they will join with online sessions, with workshops and uh, maybe some short process um, as well. So all the training that they will provide will be totally remotely. And uh, I have, uh, I always ask my um, trainees how they feel. Uh, do they miss the in-person training? And they say it doesn't make any difference. And even now when we write modules, they even enjoy more working uh, from home because they can see directly the screen share um, they can also share their screen and show their issues. 
and it even speeds things a little bit. And this is something that I tried during the COVID uh, period because when we couldn't go into the university, I was teaching students remotely and I was really impressed by the result. And I already knew that it's possible and we have never had any um, worries about that. Okay. Hello. Hi. If you can share this with us, what's your uh, retention percent percentage after this one year program? Do you keep all of the interns to continue working with you or just choose the best ones? That's my personal goal. If I don't keep all of them, that means I have failed. So, so far I see no difference in any of them. Um, it's very important for me to keep the same, um, to work, to, to work together and uh, if someone has any problem or something is not understood very well i stop everything and we clear everything out so it's really really important um, not to uh, continue with the next topics when there are something that's not clear or some problems and um, yeah um, my company can't guarantee for all of them that they will uh, take um, this uh, developer's place in our company or with the, our partners, uh, but uh, we are all uh, hoping that this will happen. And so far, I think our Uberbit partners are already thinking how we will divide them. So things are going really well. Um, we are started with six, but next year maybe we'll have even more developers. And does it ever happen to have the need to get rid of them earlier in the process, like they don't give enough interest no. in or? guarantee one year training mm -hmm. for them which is paid so the financial part everything uh, has been taken care of in in advance mm -hmm. so that they feel secure with us they know that they can learn they can grow yeah that was really important for us as a company thank you welcome thank you maria Thank you. And if you have any other questions or something comes up later, please just find me outside and we can always discuss. I'll be happy to do that. Thank you again. Thank you. That was a really good presentation. I hope so.